What's up, everybody? Blue Goblin here with part two of my uh, uh, from my comic book reviews for the last week in January 2010. If you missed part one, go check it out. I, look, uh, I reviewed everything that I got from Marvel and one indie book. I reviewed Tarot. <laughs> so uh, let's get started with part two. This is all DCs. Let's start off with Batman and Robin number seven. Um. You know what? Call me crazy. I was actually impressed with this one. Um, you know, Frank quietly does the uh, the cover, but uh, I believe Cameron Stewart is the does the artwork for the interior of the book. You know, I will admit I'm not the world's biggest fan of Grant Morrison's writing because Grant Morrison, I've said it before, and I think Craig said it in the past. You know, when you're reading a book by Grant Morrison, he expects you to just be able to keep up with the story, regardless if there's dialogue or not. You know, uh, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Final Crisis didn't work. Um, but yeah, this was good. I'm not going to spoil anything from this. This actually surprised me. This was actually very, very good. Uh, Batwoman makes an appearance, and so does Squire. I will say that. But as far as the story goes, I'm not spoiling a thing. Get this book and uh, then look at the cliffhanger and tell me that you're not impressed. <laughs> wow. I was impressed, but then again, opinions will vary. Uh, speaking of impressive, the Adam and Hawkman 46, a Back from the Dead title, courtesy of Blackest Night. Wow. <laughs> then, again, then again, look who wrote it. It's Jeff Johns. Pfft. Jesus, is there... It, I haven't read a single book yet from Jeff Johns in the past year or so that he's failed on. I mean, I have not yet seen a failure from Jeff Johns. This was fantastic. I loved it. It was great stuff. Great character development for the Atom. Just incredible. And, you know, Mark said it the best. You didn't you don't need to be a longtime fan of the Atom to understand what's going on with him in this book. This was awesome. I was I didn't expect much from this issue, and then when I read it, I was like, wow, this is actually really good. A great tie-in to Blackest Night. If you're if you're going to be a hardcore collector of Blackest Night, please do yourselves a favor and don't skip this book. This was, <laughs> this definitely impressed me much, much better than I expected it to be. Very good. Um, Blackest Night JSA number two of three. This was um, this was good as well. wasn't as good as Adam and Hawkman was, but it was still a a damn good read. Good stuff in here. Um, it focuses on some um, some other past heroes coming back as Black Lanterns and trying to mess with characters' emotions and everything. You know, simple story from the tales of Blackest Night, but wonderfully told. The Black Lanterns are showing emotion here. Which kind of may may or may not look like a ruse. Um, uh, some other stuff happens in here that's quite interesting to say the least. But it's really really well done. James Robinson writes an incredible story here. It's not as good as Adam and Hawkman was, and it's not as good as the the book of the week from DC. But it's still, I still say it's worth buying. Go ahead and give it a try. Next up, Batwoman in Detective Comics. This is number. 861. All right, it's only been an issue afterwards, and I'm already missing J.H. Williams III's art. J.H. Williams III not being on this book seriously hurt it, but Greg Greco still writes an awesome story with Batwoman in here. Very good stuff. Um, the backup story with the questions, all right too, but the main the main story is just good. It's real good. Um, this has just been incredible. You know, Jock's the new artist. They didn't say what his first or last name was. It just said art by Jock. I shit you not. <laughs> but Greg Rucka still makes some good stories, writes it really well. It would have been a lot, a hell of a lot better with J.H. Williams III's art. No offense to Jock, but you got to have Williams' art with uh, Greg Rucka here if you're going to tell a good story about Batwoman in Detective Comics. But regardless of that, go ahead and pick this book up. I don't like to spoil anything. I'll just say it was good. And I think it's well worth reading, but you'll miss William's artwork. Okay, uh, next up, Charlie's Angels in Gotham City Sirens, 
Number eight. I remembered your reference, Mark. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. Focuses on poison ivy mainly. Um, Paul Dini didn't write this book, but that's okay. Gillam Marsh does a nice job too, and the artwork's incredible. I loved it. This was a great. This is a great way to tell a good poison ivy related story. Very good stuff here. Uh, Harley Quinn, nice characterization as well. Selena, Selena's good too, but this was very, very well put together. Very well done. This is a good. This is a good book to have for any real hardcore poison ivy fan. Teen Titans 79. Finally, DC did what I've been wanting them to do ever since, ever since Static joined the Teen Titans. Write us, a, write a fill-in issue that mainly focuses on Static. Very, very good. This was, it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but it was still a good read. I've, I've been a long-time follower of Teen Titans, and I've been a real big fan of Static. This is um very, very well put together, very well done. Um. The second story, the second feature was Ravager. It's okay. It's okay. But if you're a big fan of Static, I suggest you pick this issue up. If you don't follow Static and if you don't follow Teen Titans, then go ahead and pass on this one. I would only recommend this issue for hardcore fans of both the Titans and of Static. Now for the book of the week for DC. Green Lantern, number 50. Parallax Rebirth. Holy shit. Oh, this is good. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> oh, man. I read this immediately after buying it. I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen in this book. And when I when I read the whole story, which is an awesome story, by the way. Of course, it's written by uh, Jeff Johns. And Dud Mankey's art is just incredible. I loved it. And I was almost euphoric when I saw the last page. Damn. I'm not spoiling anything. Get this book. This wasn't only the best DC book of the week, but the best comic book of the week. Period. Wow. <laughs> I'm just ooh, I, I want to I want to I want to say something. I want to say something about this book, but I'm 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 promising myself I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. Don't spoil it, Blue. Don't spoil it, Blue. Just I just got to tell you guys, get this book. This is this is awesome. Pure awesome. Wow. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I, I'm, I'm trying to keep my promise to myself not to spoil it. That's awesome. Simply awesome. Um, yeah, I better stop before I completely geek out. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I hope you caught, remember to catch part one if you haven't done it already. Remember to follow me on YouTube, follow me on Facebook or Twitter. You can follow my uh, written reviews as well as Mark's reviews and toy reviews from Box and Type X at commentcrazyreviews.webs.com. Um, thanks again for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, everybody, I'll see you later.